Hi, I'm in the USA. To be more specific, Ohad and I and our pup are in Richmond, Virginia. And I thought I should start filming something. Our little family is crashing with Rebecca, the one that eats books. In fact, I see many tasty books stacked along this wall in front of me. Currently, she's um, on a business trip, so we have two dogs this week because we're watching her dog. So Jacob is really excited to play and to have a sibling this week. Um, I don't know if her dog is loving it. He's just quite a bit older and he's like, listen, kid, five years ago, maybe we would have just ran around for hours, but not happening. But they're really so cute together. Um, we're kind of just crashing here um, as a place to land, but we are loving Richmond, Virginia. Never thought that I would find myself here. Raspberry stuck in my teeth. We can confidently say the first three days have been bliss and we absolutely love it here. So yeah, we've got our eye on Richmond now, just as, I don't know, we'll see how things go. So plans for today, it's already almost six o'clock. We are going to a free wine tasting down the block in front of, that's connected to a pizza place. So I guess we'll probably have pizza. Um, and I guess you taste like three wines for free. So we're definitely doing that. It's like two minutes walk from here. Um, then we'll have to come back and very tipsily walk the dogs. Current reading is, I left it downstairs, but I see it in the garden um, through the window. The Children's Bach by Helen Garner. She's an um, Australian author. This book was published, I think, in the 80s, like in the end of the 80s but it's been republished in English by a few different publishers. This one is by Escaping My Brain. I'll put it here. And I'm loving it. It's like a short novel um, about a family um, and the husband of the families has an old friend from the past um, who kind of pops back up into his life with her kind of misfit little sister and is kind of like throwing a curveball or like opening doors to less conservative ways of living within this family dynamic and you get the sense that the wife of the family is really not happy um and so the presence of this old friend is like kind of sending all of them off into like exploratory behaviors but I'm like not even halfway, so I don't really want to say more because I don't really know. Um, but I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. I read on the plane um, here, which was a long, you know, it's like 11 hours. So I finished, like almost started and finished um, Body Work by Melissa Fabos and really enjoyed it a lot. It was just like I breezed through it. Um, a very readable nonfiction um, about personal writing, about what it is to write a memoir, um, and about the body. And she, yeah, it's just a really insightful, interesting, great writer um, talking about what it is to to write about your own life and how that can be inherently political if you are not a straight white male. She used to be a dominatrix um, and a sex worker and so she talks about sex and how we write about sex and yeah our bodies and memoir writing um, in a really personal way so that was really nice I enjoyed that a lot but I was craving for something like a little um, like a little novel that would, wouldn't take me too much time, wouldn't be a big commitment. Uh, that would be like a good little snack novel. So the children's Bach is that one for now. As you could assume, um, staying in another reader's, a very avid reader's house, um, there's the, an endless amount of books to choose from. So that has been like 
very, very fun and interesting to, you know, just have a peruse around and to fight the feeling of like, I want to read everything. I have to just read everything in this house while I'm here, you know, which wouldn't be possible anyway. Okay, uh, I'm gonna log off for now, go to the wine tasting. Look at my sweet dog. I went to show you my sweet dog and then I was wearing an embarrassing pair of pajama shorts. Um, so I will not do that. Sweetheart. Maybe some short vlogs coming your way. Um, I'm trying to make no plans for like two weeks and just like enjoy um, resting and I don't know, just, yeah, being, being, um, and recovering from like a myriad of things. So I don't know, I don't want to make any promises, but it could be fun to make a few videos while we're here. Rebecca did say we could stay forever. Um, not sure she knows what a dangerous statement she made. Okay, bye. It is the next day from the previous clips. I'm wearing like a huge t-shirt. Uh, I feel like I've showed up to a dinner slightly underdressed. I don't know, I always like have this ambition to like wear something cute when I'm filming these clips, but not now, That now is not the time. This little one has come to join us. Can you get comfortable? You wanna lay down? So I wanna to talk to you about this stack of books. Um, so this was the book that I was speaking to you about earlier, um, The Children's Bach by Helen Garner, but I have no more to add to it than what I already said in the other clips because I haven't really had a chance to, oh, it's hot in here. I really had a chance to read more. Um, yeah, so that's that. Um, but I forgot, the reason why I wanted to film this clip now, is I forgot that I did read this one. Okay, have your itch. Yesterday morning, over my coffee, I read this little ditty. Um, this super short book. This is called Something Special by Iris Murdoch. I have never read Iris Murdoch, but... Rebecca is a big fan of hers um, and has read a lot of her work. She's like making her way through um, Murdoch's oeuvre. Um, and this is a heart-rending heart tale of love and repression recently discovered. Um, when was this originally published? Let's see. So this story was, I guess, first published within like a collection of short um, stories called Winter's Tale number three, and that was in 1957. But this edition was, guess, from 2000, um, with added illustrations by Michael McCurdy. Um, so it kind of reads a little bit like a storybook. Um, anyway, so yeah, this is my first Iris Murdoch. What is this about? This is basically a little short tale about um, a woman who does not want to get married. Um, her family is, this is set in Dublin in 1950, and our um, main character's name is Yvonne, and she's described as independently minded. And her family's like, why aren't you marrying this man that's courting you? Um, what's his name? Sam. And she's like, I don't want to get married. Sam is not the one. I don't, I, I'm not, I'm not about it. I'm about actually being in love with someone. Um, I know, crazy and um, completely out of line. Um, the, the, then this follows like one night with Sam um, out in the town and going into like some dangerous, you know, underground um, pubs and where like, you know, the kind of folk you don't want to be around or like that a lady shouldn't be around. Um, 
they go there and of course she's like kind of loving it and kind of getting traumatized so it's kind of like a date night gone wrong with this guy that wants to marry her and she's not about getting married like also ends kind of poignantly in the end and that's all i'll say about it like it, i really enjoyed it it was like a fun morning read that felt like reading um a classic but not like 400 pages this was like i don't know 50 pages what is the fate of women what is the destiny of women especially at that time in the 50s would it be possible for them to be independently minded and that like being at odds with conforming um and it says Yvonne comes to a painful realization that she can no longer maintain the balance between her bold spirit and the impending truths of a forced forestalled adulthood. This was so descriptive and it really made me want to read more Iris Murdoch. Um, I'm sure that people would be like, that is totally not her greatest work, you know, like A Severed Head or um, The Sea to Sea or things like that. But there was something about her descriptive nature through the scenes in which Yvonne and Sam are getting into in this one night together. That I thought was really beautiful um, and yeah I just I thought it was great so um, I will definitely be reading more of that but that was like a fun little bite in the morning then I wanted to say that I also um, picked up Pond by Claire Louise Bennett because Rebecca had it on her shelf and I love Checkout 19 this year and I wanted to read Pond and I got about uh, 56 pages in and then I kind of wanted something else. Like the vocabulary of Claire Louise Bennett is intense. Like every few sentences, there's one or two words like I've never heard of in my whole life, um, which can make for like, it's just big brain energy that can be like very challenging. And I just felt like I was starting to push myself through the pages when I wasn't really up for that kind of like challenge. Like there's times when I really am and times that I'm not. And I, so I, I got to like page, you know, 56 and felt like I really love Claire Louise Bennett and the way that she writes about things and just the style that she uses um, is very fascinating to me and enjoyable, but I just didn't want to work that hard in my brain. So I set that aside and did like the Murdoch and then now the Helen Garner. When I was picking this up, I was also thinking about picking this up, which is Flight by Lynn Steger Strong, uh, the author of Want, which I also didn't read, but I know that Rebecca really loved Want. I don't know if she's read this. I don't know which book stacks are books she's read and which she has not. Um, so I'll ask her about, about that later. This follows a family gathering in Christmas in upstate New York after the death of their beloved matriarch at odds over the settling of her estate, a novel about art, grief, shame, ambition, joy, and the American safety net. So I thought that that sounded really fun. And I like, I don't know, I'm feeling the season change here um, in Richmond with all the leaves changing and everything. And I was like, Maybe I want to like cozy up with um, like a Christmas novel to like get me excited for December. Um, and I like the idea of like one space in a story, like that this family gathers like in like a house in upstate New York for Christmas and like all the um, tribulations and like complicated dynamics that are happening in one space. I don't read a lot of books like that, but if I'm gonna read a novel um, with a storyline, I like if it's not too expansive, like that, you know, like that it's contained either like in one day or in a road trip or in one space. I'm always drawn to that. So, um, so yeah, I have my eye on that, but I have not yet started it. Those are all the books on the horizon right now. We'll see where they go. Tonight, as long as we can make it, because our jet lag has been pretty intense, 
Um, there's a drag show, free drag show tonight um, with Utica, who's one of the um, drag queens that we really liked from RuPaul's Drag Race. Um, and that would be really fun. And I w want to see more of the queer scene in this city. And it's Halloween soon. So like, I'm sure all the drag numbers will be like spooky and Halloween and camp. So that will be really fun. So I hope that we um, find ourselves awake at um, 11 or whatever, whatever time the, the show is. Let's see. If I want to keep these um, vlogs short, then maybe I will just finish this and then wrap it up and then we can move on to other things in some other videos. All right. Bye. Hi, I just wanted to pop on here quickly and talk about the wine tasting that we went to yesterday um, at that pizza place. It was super cute to just like taste three wines that are all like from the same producer, at least it was yesterday. Um, and then we got like this cheesy bread that we could dip in red sauce, like so not really a pizza, but it was amazing. The smell from that whole pizza place was just like intoxicating. But we did end up buying one of the wines that we tried. Um, so the wine is called, um, is by Ruth. Le Lewandowski. Where did they say this wine was from? California? Outside California. Outside California. This particular wine is called Naomi with this really, really beautiful um, little drawing. It's a white wine. It's 100% Gibson Ranch Grenache Gris. Unrefined and unfiltered. Just tasty because it's a natural wine. It has that kind of slightly funky taste. We tried also two different ones, like one that's really an orange skin contact wine and another one that's just a lot more kombucha-esque. And this one was the least funky. I like it really funky, but Oha doesn't like it so funky. Now we have a monster dog in the kitchen. It's sweet, like we got like green, green apple, almost like a cider kind of taste. Honey, do you want some? Hi, back in the sun. It's a new day. How do I do this? I guess I'll talk to you like this. Um, wow, last night we went to a queerlesque, like a queer burlesque night. It was honestly so inspiring. Like so many different people of different ages and sizes and shapes and colors and like it was just so nice and actually there was no alcohol and Ahad and I were talking about like how it's such a part of like queer nightlife like being I don't know like al like substances um and that it was actually like really refreshing to go to like an event and not have a bar and like not need to drink anything in order to have like a great time, which is like, it's obvious, just it's, I don't know, we're not doing it that much. We, we like to have a drink while we do things. We've got like some light play going on here. Okay, I came to end the video by saying that I finished um, The Children's Bach by Helen Garner. So it turns out this week I've read two books, including the Murdoch, about like women against convention or like rebellious women um because basically this story um i was describing it to rebecca as sort of like swimming home by deborah levy although the style is super different the mood is super different so if you didn't like that like you should still give this a chance because they're not the same book the kind of family life or like picture of a family and then like the infiltration of a stranger causing like a derailment 
in the dynamics. And that really, really reminds me of Swimming Home with Kitty, I think her name is, that's floating in the pool in the beginning. Um, so yeah, you have everything I said about this already. Just sort of follow mostly the wife of the family, Yvonne, no, Athena. I don't know why I have Yvonne in my head. That must have, that's from the Murdoch. Um, Athena Fox. She is the mother of the family of the two kids and, um, and the presence of this like old friend of her husband named Elizabeth and Elizabeth's daughter, like, yeah, they kind of show her like a new world, um, like a more bohemian lifestyle, a more like free sex, free, um, free spirit life. And so it's kind of like a story of an affair, um, like Athena leaves the family and spends like a few days with another man and just all that she feels and discovers in that experience. And then similar to the Murdoch as well, these books like have a kind of circular narrative, like things kind of come back around to where they started, but like with a different perspective. Um, and maybe I'll just leave it at that. But I thought this was really good um, for a short novel. Um, it was, yeah, interesting, great writing. I love Helen Garner's writing. I would love to read more of what she's written. Oh, and also like something questionable also happens in the end, like regarding the father of the family. So it's like everything dissolves, like everything that their marriage and family is built on gets dissolved by these two figures coming into the picture. And I really love those kinds of stories. The hair is like a puff a little bit today. My suitcase is actually mostly full of winter clothes because I thought it would be cold. And the first night that we arrived here, it was cold. Um, and now the sun is out for the past week almost and it's fucking hot. Uh, okay, thanks for watching. Um, I hope this was interesting for you. And um, as always, thanks for being here. Thanks for subscribing if you are subscribed. I'll catch you in the next one. What are you guys reading? Leave it downstairs. What are your fall reads? I want to know what you're cozying up to, unless you're on the other um, side of the world and it's summer where you are or something. So uh, just let me know what you're reading. Okay, bye.